Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev. We're going to be looking at another SQL tutorial in this video and it's going to be focusing on case statements. Now, case statements were introduced in SQL Server 2008 and what they do is evaluate a list of conditions and return results based on those conditions. They can be used in select statements, update, delete, where having. And what's important to note is they're not to be confused with if statements. So if statements are used to control the order of execution of SQL, whereas case statements are not. I've now come over to SQL Server and we're looking at our customer's sample. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video that went live on the 6th of April GMT, uh, which refers to creating a sample set of data, which is how we in fact created this table, do go back and have a look at that video. There's lots of interesting techniques in there on how we can create a sample of our data. So our original customers table was in the region of 2 million rows, which to some could be considered quite a small table. Uh, but what I've done is taken a subset of that data, a thousand rows, and dropped it into a customer sample table, which is what we're going to be working with today. So I've just selected a few columns, customer ID, the customer name, gender, and date of birth. Now we're going to be paying particular attention to the gender column. As we can see within that column, they're simply flagged as M for male or F for female. Now the scenario we're going to be covering is we want to actually change what is outputted based on the values within that column. And that's where our case statements come in. So what we want to achieve is wherever it's represented as an M, we want to output that to make it male, and wherever it's represented as an F, we'll output that to female. So outputting those results just make it more readable to users. And this is where the case statement comes in. So I'm going to use the case statement within our select statement. As mentioned in the introduction, it can be used in other areas. Um, we're simply going to write the keyword case, and then I'm going to go down onto a new line just to make sure it's clear. And then what we're going to write is when gender equals M, then we want to output male. So what that will do is within our data set, every time it's M, it will replace that with the word male. And then we're going to go on a new line to say when gender equals F, then female. So we're going to replace that with female. So we can see within our case statement, we have our conditions case, when the gender is equal to M or F, replace it, which is what we do with the then keyword. And then to simply close our case statements, we always have to write the keyword end and then we can give that an alias there. For simplicity, we'll just refer to that as, as gender. We'll keep it the same column name. So we'll go ahead and execute that query now. And we can see in our results grid, wherever we had an M, that's been replaced with male, and wherever we had an F, that's been replaced with female. What we will now do is simply apply an update to this table. So we're just going to use our top two customers and we're just going to simply write uh, an update statement and what we want to do is set the gender value to null and see how that affects our statement, our case statement that we're actually running. So we're going to set gender is null and we're just going to use a where customer ID in and we're just going to do this for a couple of our customers. So the top two, I'll just change that to be correct syntax. So we'll go ahead and execute that now. And we've had two rows affected as we would expect. So I'll just clear the results grid and go ahead and execute our initial query with our case statement. So we can see there in our top two results grid, we can see the gender 
is null so it can't pick it up so within the case statement it can't read that those are within one of those two values so it simply outputs null now within case statements what we can use is the else keyword so I'm just going to remove our second condition and this is just to show you where you need to be careful when writing case statements so I can write the keyword else so this will refer to every result every result that isn't equal to M so we're going to say else female and then if we go ahead and execute that we can see our top two customers in this table their genders been set to female but that's actually incorrect because we don't actually know what their gender is we've flagged that as null so what we can do within our case statement I just wanted to show you this to show an example of how case statements can fall down if we're not careful so we're going to add it back in where our gender equals F then we're going to set it to female and then what we're going to do on the last line of that statement we're then going to add an else and output unknown to simply state that we don't know that gender I'll just remove this update statement now so we don't execute that again accidentally and we can see there we've now got the correct result so that's outputting as unknown now one more thing that's interesting about case statements is the order in which they are evaluated the results so we're going to have a look at a scenario and I'm going to use a particular customer ID uh, 5995 so we'll say when customer ID equals 5995 then we're going to change that to unknown even though it's set as male at the moment so if I just write that out now so we can see the order of evaluation is it's going to pick up the customer ID and set it to unknown but also the gender is still set as M so we would expect that to change to male particularly in the term in uh, terms of transactions because it will always be the latest value that's applied but with case statements because it's evaluated all at once the customer will fall into that first category and then will not be evaluated again so I'll go ahead and execute this to demonstrate and we can see customer ID 5995 has been set to unknown although he will again fall into the category of male he's already been evaluated so he's no longer evaluated again so I find that quite uh, that's quite cool about evalu uh, about case statements is that once a result is evaluated it's never evaluated again for example if I was to run two update statements where I set that customer IDs value of gender to null and then another update statement where I set it to male then we'd expect the result to be male but within the case statement because it's within one query it will only be evaluated once some common downfalls I see when I look at case statements is people often forget to put the end statement in there as well so when we go ahead and execute that we'll get an incorrect syntax error so whenever we open a case statement we must always put the end keyword in there we don't need to put an alias because we're working with SQL but it's always best practice to do so so that's just a common uh, downfall I see when looking at case statements as well so we'll just go through the syntax again so we simply open the statement with the keyword case and then we put in our evaluations so when a certain column equals a certain value then the value that we want to change it to we can add the else at the end of our list to say when it doesn't fall into any of the previous criteria set it to this value and then we must always end with this with the keyword end as well 
I hope you have enjoyed that video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you are new to the channel, check out my other videos and do subscribe. And hit that notification button as well to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.